are the river haggies. Our waiters are not baggy. I am Fran. And I am Liz. And welcome to the Hudson. We will use our same net. And maybe we will get wet. And you will wish to see the fish we capture on the Hudson. <laughs> Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Newton Hook. It's part of the National Estuarine Research Reserve. This area is a designated unique area and is open to the public to enjoy. And we're over 100 miles from New York City, but the river is still tidal here. I hope you enjoy joining us on a fishing expedition. Let's drop the net in, Liz, and see what we catch. All right, Brandy. So today we're using a seine net. This uh, particular net is one that's been used all over the world by many people in many countries. It's been in existence for probably thousands of years. It's a great way to catch a lot of fish all at one time. My partner here, Liz, is walking out with the net. And you can see there's a pole on her end, just like there is on mine. This net has floats on the top and some sinkers on the bottom so the fish can't escape from kind of making an upside down U shape. And then the two of us will haul in, hopefully a whole lot of fish, back at the shoreline. Rock of fish. <laughs> <laughs> Well-known species in the Hudson River. caught a fillet of sole. It's a very popular fish in many restaurants. People enjoy the tasty white flesh of the fish and uh, I'll have to uh, try to glue it back together again. Perfect. He's, look at how beautiful he is on the screen. Well, I trained him. <laughs> this uh, tiny little fish might grow up to be about four to ten inches long. The male's uh, fish uh, will build a nest really close to the shoreline. And they actually, uh, several of them will build a whole colony of nests. So they kind of hang out together and the males protect the eggs. And sometimes they'll have as many as three broods of fish throughout the entire season. Uh, so the body shape on this fish is, he's kind of flat. He's got a deep body. And if you look really closely at the dorsal fin, which is the fin that goes along its backbone, you'll see that it has two types of fins. It has what we call a soft rayed fin and a spiny rayed fin. And these fish can also be identified by the shape of their tail. Some tails are kind of a V shape, some are more squared off. So take a look at your uh, fish uh, using your fish identifier and see if you can uh, find other ways of determining what kind of fish we're catching. So hooray for the little bluegill. Rolling. Yeah. Rolling, rolling, rolling. All right. So this fish is going to be very, very difficult for you to identify because it's, it has so many tricky parts to it. It's very long. It has a couple of fins right up by the top of its head and one fin that goes all the way around, um, like the whole length of its body, it's, it's dorsal fin on top. So if you're gonna use a fish ID to try to figure out what this fish is, you can do that now. Did you figure it out? It is an American eel. It's my favorite fish. And this one is probably a couple years old. It's what we would call an elver. So Liz, it looks like we've caught ourselves uh, one, two, three of the blue clawed crabs that are found in the Hudson River. A lot of people are surprised to know that we even have such a thing out there, but we do. And one, that bigger one, I think, seems to be a male with the other two being female. You're probably right, Fran. And it's so surprising sometimes to find these ocean creatures in our net way up here over 100 miles north of New York City but here they are blue claw crab blue claw crabs are edible you can have a nice meal of these if you if you catch the bigger ones holy geez we got something big in the net oh my gosh holy smokes Liz I don't know what this is wait wait a minute oh, hold on hold on oh it's a dog fish so we're going to take a look 
look at what's called the turbidity of the Hudson River today. Now, turbidity is another word for the clarity. Can you see through it? For example, if I hold up this bottle of water, I can see you. I can look out, I can see the river, I can see Liz out there pulling the sample. However, if I were to look through this bottle, it's a little difficult to see. And that's because of the tide action in our river. Every day the tides come in, they roll in, they get, the tide goes out, it comes back in, it goes back out. And every time the tide does that, it stirs up the bottom of the river. And the bottom of the river is where all the sediment is, all the mud uh, on the floor of the river. And so it makes it a little difficult to see through. I wonder how clear the water is going to be. Let's take a look. All right, and we're going to use a tool to, to help us to measure how, um, how murky or turbid the water is. And this is called a turbidity tube. And basically, it's a tall tube and it has um, measurements on this side in centimeters. And then it has a little disc all the way at the bottom. And that disc is called a secchi disc. And you can see that it's black and white. It's very high contrast. So we're going to fill up this tube with water and Fran's gonna look down into the tube. When she first looks down, she might not even be able to see the disc. And then we're gonna let the water out the bottom. And when she can see the disc, she's gonna say, stop. And we'll stop and then we'll measure how the depth of the water where we can see the tube. First of all, we'll just make very clearly sure that our valve is closed. And I'm going to try not to get you very wet, Fran. Appreciate that. How am I doing? You're getting me wet. Okay. You're still getting me wet. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm getting you wet too. Okay. Now from the side, that looks pretty clear, but can you see the disc? No. So I'm going to open up my valve and the water should start coming out. Going, going, going. Going, going. Stop. So it's at 70. So I'd won my bay. Hey, hey. Won't that be okay? Hey, hey. Yada, 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 yada.